I'm Nicolo Pilati, and I'm going to speak about how the tandem duplication distance problem is hard over bounded alphabets, which is a joint work between Fernando Cicalese and me. Uh, first, we define the operation uh, tandem duplication and the uh, corresponding distance. A uh, tandem duplication is uh, uh, an operation on a string that uh, takes uh, as input uh, a string of the type uxb, and uh, where ux and b are substrings, and um, uh, copies the substring x to obtain the string uxxb. Uh, for example, if we have uh, the string 1, 2, 5, 3, 4, 5, 1, we can uh, take uh, the substring 5, 3, 4 as our string uh, substring x and uh, duplicate it. So uh, we obtain the string 1, 2, 5, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 1. The tandem duplication distance from the string s to the string t, uh, denoted by uh, this td st, is the minimum k such that uh, there is a series of, of k duplications which uh, brings us from the string s to the string t. If no such k exists, then we say that uh, the this td between s and t is equal to infinity. So let's see some examples. The dist td between the strings 0, 1 and 0, 1, 0 is infinity uh, because uh, it's easy to see that uh, no matter how we choose our duplication, uh, we cannot uh, go from the string 0, 1 to the string 0, 1, 0. Uh, while the tandem duplication distance uh, between the string 0, 1, 2, 1 and 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 1 is a 2. Uh, because uh, there is uh, a series of two duplications, namely these, that uh, can bring us from S to T. Uh, we can first duplicate the characters 0, 1 from S and obtain the string 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, then duplicate the character 1 and obtain the, find the destination string uh, T, which is 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 1. Uh, it's easy to see that uh, there is no single duplication that could uh, bring that could possibly bring us from S to T. So uh, this is the minimum K. Uh, two natural problems arise from the definition of uh, uh, this TD. Namely, uh, the first is the tandem duplication existence problem, which we call TD exist which takes as input the strings uh, S and T and uh, uh, asks if uh, the this uh, TD between S and T is less than infinity. In other words, if it is uh, possible at all to go from S to T with the duplications. We saw before that this is not always possible. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not an easy problem. Uh, the tandem duplication distance uh, TD dist problem uh, is uh, the problem that takes uh, as input strings s and t and an integer k and asks if uh, uh, the dist td between s and t is less than or equal to k. So if we can go from the string s to the string t in no more than k steps of k duplications. Uh, before our work, uh, the tandem duplication distance problem was uh, shown to be NP-hard for unbounded alphabets uh, by Lafond. Uh, this means that uh, if uh, um, we can take um, uh, an alphabet as large as we want uh, for the strings S and T, uh, the problem is uh, shown to be NP-hard. Uh, for the tandem duplication existence problem, we know that only for binary strings, we have a polytime algorithm. Uh, and uh, we don't know anything else uh, for uh, uh, strings with, uh, uh, with larger uh, uh, alphabets. Uh, our results was uh, first um, uh, about the tandem duplication distance problem, 
So we showed that not only the problem is NP-hard for unbounded alphabets, but that it's NP-hard also for bounded alphabets in particular of size five or more, of course. And regarding the tandem duplication existence problem, we showed that um, there is a polytime algorithm also for a strictly larger superclass of binary strings. Um, in this uh, talk, uh, we will focus only on the first result, uh, which is the, also the main one. Uh, so the first step is uh, show that uh, the tandem duplication distance problem is in NP. And uh, since the number of duplications uh, to transform S into T is at most equal to the length of T, uh, we can use a certificate given by the sequence of duplications in uh, um, uh, and we know that this is polynomial in the size of the instance. So, uh, it, and it's also easy, very easily uh, uh, verifiable in uh, in uh, in polynomial time. So the problem is in MP. Regarding the MP hardness, we will um, use a we will create a reduction from the tandem duplication distance problem over unbounded alphabets. Uh, in this problem, only special pairs of strings S and T are allowed, and we call these block exemplar pairs. Uh, a generalization of uh, instances considered in the paper by Lafond. Uh, these block exemplar pairs uh, will be shown later in the following slides, how they look like. So the structure of our hardness proof is this. We start from click instances and we uh, reduce to TD distance instances first. So Lafond showed that we could uh, we can uh, start from click instances and to the block exemplar problem um, in which uh, um, we have a string S and a string T and in the string S all characters are distinct. So there are no two characters which are equal. In our reduction, we start from the block exemplar problem and we uh, use an encoding to um, encode each, uh, um, uh, to encode the strings S and T into strings S inverse set and T inverse set, which are not exemplar. So it's not true that uh, um, in S all characters are distinct, but are uh, tentary. So uh, in, they are, uh, uh, they um, have an alphabet of size of five. Uh, so uh, we aim to prove that uh, with uh, our encoding, the duplication sequences are mappable one to one from uh, the unbounded alphabet uh, pairs of strings to the um, uh, five -ary strings. If we manage to show that there is a one to one correspondence between the duplications in the uh, in the pentary uh, in the pentary subcase, uh, then we will uh, we are able to show that uh, the problem is NP complete. Otherwise, we could solve the block example prob problem too. So uh, this is a high level idea of uh, how uh, block example pairs look like. The, the, and this is the, the instances of the unbounded alphabet version of the problem that were proved hard by Lafond. So the string S is equal to uh, a substring A and a substring Z, uh, followed by the character euro. While the string T is, uh, consists in uh, substrings A0, Z0, uh, A1, Z1, all separated by the character euro. Uh, now we will see how these uh, substrings uh, look like. So A and Z are long strings made of pairwise distinct uh, letters. Uh, while um, the character euro is a distinct character which doesn't occur in A or Z and um, functions as a um, uh, separating character to separate the, the, these uh, 
the species of the string T. While the, uh, in the string T, we have that uh, each uh, AI are suffixes of A uh, with the uh, single letter duplications. And uh, each ZI are copies of Z with the single letter duplications too. So we take, uh, for example, uh, A0 is, uh, we take it as a um, suffix of A and uh, we can do at most single characters duplications, not two characters. Uh, we define a block as the um, substring of uh, the of a, a string which is uh, included between two um, euros uh, signs. Uh, we can now make an example. So, uh, for example, you can have the string A, which is ABC, and the string Z, which is UZ. Um, in this case, for example, we can take the string A0 as ABCC and the string Z0 as uh, the string UZ. So we notice that Z0 is a copy of Z, in this case with no character duplications, and the string A0 is a suffix of ABC, in this case all the substring, with the, the duplicated character C. Then we have A1, uh, which is BCC, so again a suffix of A with the, the duplicated character C, while in this case Z1 uh, is a copy of Z but with the, um, uh, the duplicated character Z, and uh, so on and so forth. So in this case the string S is ABCUZ uh, dollar, um, euro, sorry, and uh, T is uh, the string, which is the concatenation of the previously um, defined the strings, uh, all um, uh, with the, these uh, euro signs in between. So uh, now we show that there are um, two ways to go from S to T, basically. One is more uh, easy and one is more involved. The first way is to duplicate the blocks and then the single letters. So to create T from S, if you have the example from before, so the string S and T from before, we can first create the second block, duplicating the whole fourth block, but the letter A. And we can go on create the, the, creating the third block, by duplicating uh, the second block but the character B. Uh, one, once we created the, the blocks, we can uh, start by uh, doing the single character duplications. So we start by uh, duplicating character C to, um, and uh, then to duplicate the character Z in the second block and the character Z in the third block. Then uh, going on with this uh, strategy, we can uh, uh, I think with other two duplications, we can uh, create the string T. Another way, uh, which is uh, uh, a bit more uh, mm, complicated is to interleave letters and block dupli duplications. So uh, we can uh, start uh, from the, from, by duplicating the, the character C in the first block, then, we um, duplicate the, um, the first block to create the second one, everything but the, but the letter A. And uh, here we have the, the character which is already duplicated. Then we duplicate the character Z. And then we create the last, uh, uh, the last block. Uh, in this uh, uh, case, the second way is uh, uh, faster. And uh, this uh, notice that uh, this uh, structure, this uh, choice uh, of block exemplar pair is enough to, uh, to, is enough reach to allow an encoding of the click problem. So um, now we show the, a key property of uh, the, the block exemplar pairs. And uh, we will uh, use this in the hardness proof. So it's uh, very important. The, this key property, uh, as shown in uh, Lafond, is that in any sequence of duplications, 
which goes from S to S1 to S2 to Sk minus 1 to T. Uh, each intermediate string is also made of blocks. So uh, each S1, S2, uh, Si is, has also a structure of the type uh, A0 prime, uh, Z0 prime, uh, Euro, A1 prime, Z1 prime, Euro, and so on and so forth. So uh, let's keep this uh, important property in mind. And uh, let's give an idea of the proof. So our goal is to map uh, each uh, duplication of uh, our string in the um, pentary alphabet with every duplication in the string of, uh, uh, in the original string S. Uh, to do this, uh, we map every letter of the, we map every letter of the, um, of A and uh, Z to ternary strings. And then we extend this duplication, this, um, this mapping to the string, to the substrings A, I, and Z, I. So if we focus on uh, one single duplication, we can see that we will uh, um, uh, put in relation every um, substring of the, the original string with every suffix, with every uh, substring of uh, our string S inverse set uh, I. And uh, finally, we will show that the uh, um, key property of um, uh, an additional key property. So um, this is the version, the, the same property, but uh, the version for our um, um, pentary alphabet. So uh, namely in any sequence of duplications, S inverse set, S inverse set one, S inverse set two, um, each intermediate string is also made of blocks. So uh, we will show this uh, additional key property. Uh, how do we go from block exemplar pairs to block uh, uh, pentary pairs? So uh, here we present how the, the encoding works. And uh, we can start by taking the string S, which is equal to uh, A, Z, and uh, Euro. And let's say that uh, is composed by the character A, B, C, U, Z, Euro, for example. So the first step is to take a ternary square free string, uh, for example, this one. And uh, this is uh, uh, obtainable in uh, polynomial time. We can, uh, we start by mapping the last character of S to the last character of the ternary square free string. Then we go on by mapping the second character of Z, the character U, to the, um, uh, the, the second character of the ternary square free string starting from the, from the right. And then we map every um, character of A to a substring, which has an increasing size in respect to the, uh, to the previous one. So for example, the character C is uh, mapped to 0, 2, the character B is mapped to 0, 2, 1, and so on and so forth. Uh, then the only thing we need to do is uh, to add a separating character, which is the dollar character. And in this way, we can create the strings A inverse set and Z inverse set uh, euro. And this will uh, give us the uh, string S inverse set, which is the encoded one. Um, we notice that S inverse set is square free because we, um, we created it by starting from a square free string basically and inserting uh, characters, uh, the dollar character and the euro character, which were not uh, uh, in the ternary square free string. Uh, so uh, we can, uh, we also define mappings of single letter duplications in A, Z uh, in order to encode the blocks A, I, Z, I. Um, so how do we do that? If, uh, for example, the string S is equal to A, B, C, C, U, Z, uh, Euro, B, C, C, U, Z, Z, Euro, uh, we can, uh, when there is a duplication, uh, duplicate the first character of the encoded substring of our string, of our encoding. So for example, if uh, the string BB is duplicated, 
we will uh, um, duplicate the first character, the character zero in our encoding. If the uh, character C is duplicated, uh, the character zero in uh, our encoding and so on and so forth. Um, notice that um, uh, in this way, in each block, uh, in the strings produced by this encoding, the only duplications are single letter duplications. And uh, this is exactly like the original blocks. So um, their position is in, a, we can say that it's in a one-to-one -one correspondence with the single letter duplication of the original strings. Um, so therefore the this encoding of S uh, inverse at prime uh, as a one-to-one -one corres um, is um, as a one-to-one -one correspondence between the possible blocks obtainable starting from pieces of S and the blocks obtainable starting from uh, pieces of uh, uh, S inverse S. So if we fix such an encoding, uh, the encoding we spoke about before, uh, we can uh, connect to the main result finally. So how do we go from exemplar pairs to um, pentary pairs? First, we fix a sequence of duplications, uh, S, S1, S2, and, um, and so on to the string T. Then we focus on a single duplication, the one which goes from SI to SI plus one. Uh, we notice that uh, SI and SI plus one have a block structure as shown in uh, La Fond. And uh, uh, we know that uh, S inverse at I and S inverse at I plus one are their encodings. Uh, then the string uh, uh, S inverse at uh, I as a duplication for sure to the string S inverse at I plus one. And uh, therefore we can conclude that uh, the string S inverse set uh, can have the same number of duplications to the string T inverse set. Uh, we can see that because uh, if, that, if, the, um, if we have the encoding that encodes every single letter of the string S, then we can do the exactly same duplications in our encoded uh, string. So this is always possible. We can, in this uh, uh, direction, we can always have uh, the, the same duplications. This is the easy part of the reduction. Uh, the hard part of the reduction is the inverse. So uh, if we have to uh, map uh, pentary pairs to block exemplar pairs. So, uh, First, we fix a sequence of duplications, S inverse set, S inverse set uh, one, uh, two, and so on and so forth to uh, T inverse set. We focus on uh, one of these uh, duplications, the one which goes from S inverse set I to S inverse set I plus one. And we say that uh, if we are convinced that S inverse set I and S inverse set I plus one have a block structure, and this is not easy to see, um, and uh, S uh, i and S i plus one are their pre-image pre for their encoding, then for sure uh, we will have the, um, the same result. So uh, we have that uh, there is a duplication which goes from S i to S i plus one. And uh, therefore we would have the result. Um, so this is the converse of before, and this is easily seen to be true if we take two uh, pentary strings made of blocks. Uh, the problem is that uh, it's not easy to see that this uh, con if condition is true. Um, and uh, our most technical uh, part of the proof uh, is to show that uh, this is always true for intermediate string strings in a sequence of duplications from S inverse set to T inverse set. And uh, hence we have the converse of the previous result. And namely we can map uh, that um, all, the, uh, all the duplications in the pentary string to the duplication of the original string. Uh, so if we, um, if we believe this, we have the result. Uh, we will not uh, um, prove that now because it's a 
bit technical, but you can uh, find it in the article and it's the main part. So this leaves us with uh, two open problems. Namely, is uh, TD exist NPR for non-binary strings? Uh, we don't know yet. It uh, could be already hard for, uh, for example, strings with uh, uh, for ternary strings. And uh, is the tiny duplication distance NPR for alphabets smaller than five? Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know even for uh, alphabets of size two, the problem is open. We don't know if it's uh, easy. And uh, are there reasonable approximation algorithms for distance DD? Uh, this is uh, still an open problem, also for binary strings. So thank you for the attention.